Let me introduce you to crunchy flowers. And what on earth are they? Well, surprisingly, they're absolutely ordinary flowers rendered crunchy by a process of uh, preservation. So they actually end up as crisp as that. They're just dried by a very interesting process. The trouble is if you go to dry ordinary flowers just by leaving an ear, they do this. This one was only picked half an hour ago. Already it started to wilt. It's uh, a rather beautiful creeper. It's the same flower that you just saw being crunched. And after no time at all, it goes from that to this rather disagreeable sort of appearance and finally ends up as that, which is absolutely no good to anybody and doesn't look terribly exciting. I'll put it down there. Well, in the same way, if you take a little daisy like that and you just dry it in air, it'll end up looking like something from somebody's herb collection, a sort of strange matted collection of nastiness. So just leaving flowers to dry in mid-air doesn't do anybody any good at all. They're no good for arrangements or for interest. The thing is that science dries flowers, or people who are interested in science dry flowers, for flower collections. And when they do it, they do it by pressing them. And they end up with interesting collections that look a bit like this. They collect the flower and fruit if they can get it, and they mount them up with all sorts of details about the life of the plant, but they press them. So that although it may be very interesting and useful for the people who can look at these and dissect them out and see what the flower is made up of, it doesn't really make the flower look like a lifelike one at all. So pressing is not going to give us the dried flower that we want in this sort of arrangement. How can we do it? How can we make the flower remain lifelike? Well, very simply by using a tin and some sand, very dry sand, the flower we want, and a bit of heat. Well. You normally use a tin because it goes into the oven if you do it the way I'm going to do it, but uh, you can't see inside the tin, so what I'm going to do is to do this whole thing inside a heat-proof glass jar. Don't do it in a glass jar. If you have a glass jar at home, put it in the oven, it'll break. So you use a tin, and this will just show you what's happening. First of all, pour in a bit of sand, dry sand to make a layer. Then take a bit of the flour that you want to preserve. This is the same creeper that I crunched before and just hold it in there, resting on the dry sand. Now, you need to cover that with more dry sand, but don't put it in in a big splodge. That'll crunch the flower up and distort it. Just sprinkle it gently, and that way it surrounds the flower and supports it in the natural form that it has in life. Just surround it gently, even more gently than I'm doing it, but you'll have more time than I've got. And that way, the entire flower, and even the leaves if you want to, are supported in the sand in a way that stops them from drying and shrinking when they, uh, well, shrinking when they dry. Okay, well, what you do with that is either to leave it in the sun for a few days or put it in the oven for a few hours and make it less than 100 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, the thing, well, we'll see what happens if you uh, overheat it later. But when you've finished, pour the sand off, and this is the effect that you're going to get if you've done it correctly. Sand comes off, and inside there, in a very lifelike form, is the flower that you put in, except now it's dry and crunchy and simply won't wither. A couple of things you have to do. One is to get a little paintbrush and brush the sand grains off. You can shake a few of them, but you might shake the flower to bits if you do that. Be very careful because it's very, very brittle. But there you can see the flower form is, in that specimen, even better than the lifelike one, which is half an hour old and starting to wilt. Hasn't lost much colour because we haven't overheated it. That's the thing you must avoid. If you overheat it, it comes out like this, brown and horrible. So keep that oven fairly low, below 100 degrees. It's a uh, right shape, but it's, uh, it's too brown. And similarly, that little purple daisy, if you overheat it, comes out looking the right sort of shape, but is altogether too brown. So whatever you do, don't overheat it. And you can experiment. You'll find some flowers work better than others. Some leaves are wonderful, and you can make them very big indeed if you uh, can get the right sort of flower. And here it comes, a bit of that creeper which has been preserved by sand drying so that we end up with both the leaves and the flowers. And there's the finished specimen.